Okay, today in this lesson we're going to look at weather mapping, how in isotherms and isobars. Um, so what we're going to look at today is how do um, meteorologists create uh, the weather maps that we see online and um, on um, forecast. And so we're going to look at what, exactly what isobars and isotherms are, what they do, how to make them, and what they're good for. Um, if you have taken uh, global geography, then you have worked on contouring, and this is exactly the same as contouring. So um, you can skip this section of the rules if you would like, and you can move right into um, drawing the contours uh, because you probably already know how to do that. Um, but for those of us who've never had contouring, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, drawing and patterns and getting the patterns out of the, the weather data. And so what we're going to do is we are going to find uh, some atmospheric variable, whether it's temperature or whether it is air pressure, and we're going to draw contour lines of, of points of equal value. So if we're drawing a temperature line, it might be 30 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius all along that line. So that brings us to rule number two. A contour can only be drawn through that data point only if the data is the exact value of that contour. Otherwise, you're going to have to estimate. You're going to have to draw it between those weather data points. What that does then is that puts higher values on one side of the contour line and lower values on the other side of the contour line. Um, you'll hear me call this fencing out and fencing in. We're going to fence in higher values or fence out lower values, however you want to look at that. Um, contours are drawn always at equal intervals. For isotherms are points of equal temperature. So iso means same and therm means temperature. That's a term you will have to know. You'll find that up here in your, um, in your background information. Uh, but isotherms are drawn at usually intervals of 5 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Or if you're using Celsius, usually it's, it's anywhere from 2 to 5. Isobars are, used, are usually drawn at 4 millibars, and isobars, again, iso means same, and bar means barometer or pressure. Because they're points of equal value, contours can never cross or touch. If you can imagine, that would be like sticking your hand out the window and saying, well, the back side of my hand is 14 degrees, and the front side of my hand is 24 degrees. That just doesn't work. It's one temperature at one location, so contours can never cross or touch. But you can have puddles of one contour on any given map. So if you look at a uh, weather map, what you'll find is sometimes you'll have little pools of red and puddles of blue and puddles of yellow, different places. Um, most contour lines will be colored as their label, uh, but sometimes you'll see other kinds of labels like numbers as well. If we zoom out far enough onto a world map, they're always going to be closed loops. Um, but that might not be the case if you're looking at a limited area map, say like a state map or a city map. Um, then you'll usually see stripes of some sort. So let's look at how to actually draw those maps. Um, so I'm flipping to page two of your note packet. And on this one, um, first what we're going to just see is just this pool of numbers, right? And it's kind of overwhelming. But if we start to look, what we see is we've got this puddle in the middle of 31s where we can tell they're kind of all 31s. So that's kind of what you do at first is you just start and look at your values. And then I can see that they've got this kind of little puddle of 29s over here and kind of down along the bottom and some up along the top. Well, our directions say that we're going to draw a contour for the number 30. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify some points that are 30. And for right now, we're going to dot those. I want you eventually to move away from drawing dots because the dots are kind of a like a newbie thing like you'll be you'll be pointed out as not knowing what you're doing if you're drawing dots and this is a, literally a collegiate level thing you'll do in college as well so uh, I want you to move away from dots as soon as possible um, but for now that's fine um, and so then what we're gonna do is just like connect the dots when you're a kid we're gonna connect the points of equal value now what we see here is I've come to this corner where I don't have any more 30s but if I imagine myself driving in a car from this 29 to this 31, somewhere along the line, I'm going to hit the, the data point of 30. Same thing here. If I drive in a car from this 29 to that 31, somewhere in the car, I'm going to hit the point of 30. And so I'm going to say and estimate that that's about right there. So I'm going to go 
right through and kind of thread this needle between my 29s and my 31s, knowing that if I drove in a car somewhere between those two points, I would hit a value of 30. And so I can kind of imagine my dots and lo and behold, look, there is another 30 and now I can connect that whole line. And so now I've drawn my contour even farther. So what you will do then is, I'm gonna pause right here, I want you to pause the movie and I want you to finish this contour out. Um, it will form a closed loop and the other hint I will give you before you start is that it will also form a shape that is familiar. All right, so now that you've had a chance to try it on your own, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the contour. And you can see if you got the shape that I did. Hopefully at this point you're starting to recognize this shape. Oops, my stand is moving here. And I'm fencing out my 29s and I'm fencing in my 31. So notice how all my 31s are ending up on one side of the line and all my 29s are ending up on the other side of the line and I'm only drawing my fence through that number 30. Um, so you wanna make sure that as you go, that's kind of a good self check. Like are they all ending up where I want them to end up? Are all the 30s ending up on my fence? All the 29s are ending up on the outside of the fence? and all my 31s are ending up inside the fence. Hopefully you guys can still see that. And lo and behold, there's a reason why I chose the color red. Ta-da! We have the shape of Nebraska. Okay? So that is how to draw the contour. The next page is your, um, is your uh, own practice, so I'm not going to do that one with you. Um, I will give you a hint that on this page there, and if you didn't think that I was truly being, uh, truly being uh, uh, truthful, um, down here at the bottom, it gives you a little clue I'm covering, oops, I'm covering up the, uh, I'm covering, oh, I'm covering up the, uh, the university, but it'll give you a hint too as to the shape that one will be. Okay, so I'm going to let you do this one on your own. There is a picture available on Blackboard if you want to see what that one's supposed to look like. I will also tell you that the, there is an error on the key on Blackboard, so um, if you find it, if you, you'll know you're doing it right if you can find the error. Okay, so then this image here, um, this is more like what it would look like. We're going to draw some isotherms here, um, and you'll notice we'll be doing several. We'll be doing 50 degrees, 60 degrees, 70 degrees. Then we're going to jump to 5 degrees at a time, and um, the process is literally the same. Um, what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to find my first values. So, um, and notice these go in, in groups of 5 and 10. Uh, most of the time we're going to be working in groups of five, not ten, but for the sake of your sanity, we um, are allowing you to do ten here. I'm going to do the first one with you. So first we have a 50 here, and I can see some 50s um, already on my map, so I'm just going to put some dots on there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and label that I'm going to use purple for my 50. Um, and then what I am going to look for as well is um, I have to make some estimations, right? So how do I get from this 50 to that 50? Do I go over or do I go under? Um, and so I have to think about that. So I'm going to imagine, again, driving in a car. If I go from this part here over to Idaho, where along this line or would I along that line hit 50? Or the same thing, if I went from Idaho to Montana, where would I hit 50 degrees? So if I imagine driving in that car, if I go north from Idaho, you know, it's probably going to get colder. But if I go from here to here, I'm going to hit 50 degrees. Well, is 50 degrees going to be closer to Idaho 
Or is it going to be closer to the coast? Well, it's only 2 degrees away from here, so I'm going to estimate that my 50 degrees is going to be about right there. Same thing here. Where would 50 degrees be along here? It's going to be pretty tight to that 48. That's a big difference in a small amount of space. So now I've got this much of the line that I can for sure draw, which then shoots me off over to that direction. Now, I also know that it should go from coast to coast. So now as a meteorologist, I've got to look at computer models. I've got to estimate because I don't have any data out here. So I'm going to go ahead and estimate your line might go a little higher north. It might go a little higher south than mine. doesn't really matter. I'm also going to use this opportunity to label my line. Um, so that way, once again, I have my line labeled. So next, what I'm going to do is continue on. This one's pretty easy. I don't have to estimate. I can just draw it straight through. But now I've got a big stretch. My next 50 is way over here. How do I get there? Well, here's a 48 up here in Canada, and here's a 55 in Minnesota. So where do I draw that line? Well, it's going to be closer to that 48 than the 50. Bring that down and off to the other coast. So there is my 50 line. So here's a good spot to pause. I'm going to give you a chance to draw your 60 degree line. And you go ahead and take that opportunity now, please. All right, as you're coming back, I'll go ahead and draw another line here for 60 degrees. You can check your work. So I've labeled it there. I'm going to identify a 60 right away. That looks good there. I've got a 60. My next 60 that I can see is here. But again, I have to estimate. Do I go above or below this line? If I take a drive south, I find I'm at already at 65 going up to 75. I'm not going to hit 60 degrees. So I know it's got to be somewhere between here and here. It's about, uh, it's going to be 10 degrees away from the 50 line. It's only going to be 5 degrees away from the 65 line. So I'm going to put it about two-thirds of the way over this direction, closer to the 65 than to the, four, the 50 line. And then here it's 5 degrees away from 55. It's 9 degrees away from 69. So it's going to be closer here than there. So there's my 60. Here's my 60. And so now you just kind of see me drawing without using those dots, and that's what I eventually want you to get to. And so now what I've done is I've fenced in my lower values. I've fenced out any number that's higher. So if you want to go back and check, you go higher number, that's below, lower number, that's above. Higher number, that's below, lower number, that's above. Higher number, that's below. Lower number, that's above. And now I know that my line is correct. The next thing a meteorologist will do is they will shade. So they're going to take and shade in all that spot. If you are doing this at home, hopefully you have some time. And you can go ahead and make that pretty and beautiful. Um, but when we did this in class, I'll tell you what, we ripped right through this, so these are kind of ugly if you had someone that you're copying notes from. I will let you continue. This is a good spot to pause the movie, and we will... Uh, Go ahead and work on that on your own, and then I'll, uh, we'll come back here in just a moment.